हेलो फ्रेंड्स हाउ आर यू ऑल सो लेट अस कंटिन्यू द फाइनेंशियल मार्केट्स टॉपिक ओके दिस इज़ द फोर्थ लेसन ऑफ दिस पर्टिकुलर सीरीज लेसन नंबर इलेवन डी अप टू नाउ वी हैव स्टडीड यू नो व्हाट इज़ द मीनिंग ऑफ फाइनेंशियल मार्केट ओके व्हाट आर द डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ फाइनेंशियल मार्केट्स डिपेंडिंग ऑन यू नो वॉट इज़ द ड्यूरेशन ऑफ बोरोइंग सो इफ इट इज़ शॉर्ट टर्म शॉर्ट टर्म मीनिंग लेस देन थ्री सिक्सटी फाइव डेज सो यू नो सच मार्केट आर नोन एज मनी मार्केट विच वी हैव कवर्ड इन द प्रीवियस वीडियो एंड इफ इट इज़ अ लॉन्ग टर्म ओके मीनिंग इट इज़ मोर देन और इक्वल टू थ्री सिक्सटी फाइव डेज देन इट इज़ नोन एज कैपिटल मार्केट्स सो इन द प्रीवियस वीडियो वी हैव ऑलरेडी स्टडीड वॉट आर मनी मार्केट्स कैपिटल मार्केट्स वी विल कवर आफ्टर यू नो अ फ्यू वीडियोज Uh, we have also seen uh, in the lesson 11b uh, about you know different instruments or uh, different institutions uh, of fina uh, you know in the financial markets so different institutions in the financial markets uh, are known as financial intermediaries and we have seen what are those and first we will uh, study in detail the different types of financial intermediaries okay and after this topic is covered we will go to the capital markets the long term markets okay that we'll again discuss in more detail later on now later on uh, now first of all let us uh, revise what we have already studied so financial intermediaries are of two types so uh, first one is banks and second one is nbfis non banking financial institutions banks we have already covered in the you know previous lessons Uh, now we will study about the NBFIs in this particular lesson series. Okay, NBFIs, non-banking financial institutions, are again categorized into three types: uh, All India Financial Institutions, then Primary Dealers, and NBFCs. All India Financial Institutions like Exim, okay, Nabard, uh, CBD, etc. All this we have already studied. Okay, so we will not repeat them again. You can go back to. uh you know uh the previous videos uh i think it was in lesson number 7f okay we have already studied them we have already studied the aifis in financial inclusion lessons see lesson 7f where we have studied this in detail now for this particular uh you know uh, video uh, we will focus on uh, primary dealers and later on we will study the nbfcs non banking financial companies so let us study the primary dealers in this particular video so primary dealers are uh, you know the registered entities with rbi so they are registered with what rbis so basically they are regulated by rbi they are licensed by rbi and who have the license to purchase and sell government securities directly see the meaning of primary dealer is that so government securities meaning what gsec okay isko gsec bolte hain we call them gsec gsec are the long term borrowing of the government these are the long term borrowing meaning more than or equal to 365 days whenever the government borrows for more than 365 days it is borrowed by issuing the bonds okay it is borrowed by issuing the bonds which are known as government securities which are known as government securities now any common person cannot directly buy the government securities from rbi okay so you and me any individual or you know any company cannot directly go and buy these government securities from the rbi whenever it is auctioned so it is it can be bought only by a few registered entities who have the license to do such transactions okay to purchase and sell government securities directly so such uh, entities who have this license to sell and purchase government securities directly from the rbi they are known as primary dealers okay now how that process happens so there is a rbi okay there is rbi what rbi will do rbi will sell the government securities to the primary dealer so there is a direct transaction between rbi and primary dealers it will sell government securities Go government securities are government long term borrowings and then the primary dealers will sell them to the common people other companies or foreign institutional investors that is how it happens okay so they kind of act as an intermediary between rbi and the market and the common people other companies other firms foreign institutional investors okay all these things we will study in detail about fii's foreign direct investment etc in the next uh, lesson okay don't worry about that uh, so this is how the primary dealer works 
uh primary dealer will also participate during the rbi's open market operations okay we have again seen what is open market operations in monetary policy okay that time the primary dealers participate so basically primary dealers create a market for government security see they are they are creating a market here right they are connecting the common people with the rbi and therefore they are creating a market where you know common people will demand these securities and rbi will sell these securities the concept of primary dealer was introduced in 1995 okay uh, and who can become a primary dealer now what is the eligibility criteria to become a primary dealer so and uh, you know uh, these are some of the uh, three eligibility criteria so it can be a subsidiary of a scheduled commercial bank or and of an all india financial institutions okay so any scheduled commercial bank for example icici bank so if 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 it has a subsidiary company of its own that company can become the primary dealer it can get an license for primary dealer or it can be a subsidiary of all india financial institution also for example exim exim bank or nabard bank so if there is a uh, subsidiary of nabard it can also become a primary dealer rbi can license them so this is the number one eligibility criteria then there is another eligibility criteria it can be subsidiaries or joint ventures in india by entities incorporated abroad so there are some entities incorporated abroad meaning they are registered outside india okay they are not registered in india under companies act but they are registered outside india so such companies but they should have subsidiaries registered in india okay they this Uh, companies who are actually registered outside india if they have subsidiary company which are registered in india or any joint venture joint venture meaning one indian company okay which is registered in india plus foreign company okay if they together form one local company one local uh, venture it is known as joint venture okay so it can be like that it can either be a joint venture with an indian company or it can be a pure subsidy of a foreign company also they can also become the primary dealers and the third criteria is it can be company corporated under companies act 1956 so it can be a purely indian company also like for example tata okay reliance these are purely indian companies they are registered in india under the companies act so these are the three uh, criteria you have to keep in mind who can become primary dealers now what are the roles of primary dealer okay what 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 roles do they perform in the market so first of all obviously they bid during the auctions of government securities because they can directly participate they can directly do the transactions with the rbi so they will do the bidding bidding meaning boli lagana okay they will they will bid for the uh, government securities they will you know bid the prices for the government security during the auctions then the second one is they provide the underwriting services we will study what is the meaning of underwriting services uh, below uh, but uh, you just keep this in mind that they also provide the underwriting services they develop a secondary debt market now obviously see uh, once you know rbi issues uh, the government securities to primary dealer then primary dealer will sell it to the common people so common people can can purchase also and they can sell also to the primary dealer so it is a kind of secondary market here resale is happening right resale is happening so they create a secondary debt market for government securities and then uh, also they offer firms quotations for buy sell or bid of treasury bills and debted securities okay government debted securities meaning basically the long term securities government securities so they also offer uh, you know different firms the quotations for buying selling and bidding uh, for t bills and debted securities because t bills can be bought by anybody right we have seen this anybody can buy t bills and they will uh, provide the quotation ki aapko itne mein aayega itne mein padega so they provide all those services Uh, for t bills as well as the government securities now at the moment as on 2022 okay as on november 2022 there are currently seven registered primary dealers in india now which are these so number one is goldman sachs india okay you must have heard this name uh, you don't need to remember this iska ratta nahi marna hai but i am just trying to tell you you know just in case you know these names come in front of you you will remember them so number one is goldman sachs india then morgan stanley india okay icici securities primary dealership okay this is a primary dealer it is a subsidiary company of icici bank then nomura fixed income securities private limited okay this is again a primary dealer then pnb guilds limited okay pnb guilds limited 
देन एस टी सी आई प्राइमरी डीलर लिमिटेड एंड एस बी आई डी एफ एच आई ओके एस बी आई डी एफ एच आई अगेन दिस इज़ अ सब्सिडरी कंपनी सो दीज आर द सेवन रजिस्टर्ड प्राइमरी डीलर्स इन इंडिया हु आर करंटली ऑपरेशनल मोस्ट फेमस इज द गोल्डमैन सेक्स एंड मॉर्गन स्टैंडली ओके दिस टू आर द मोस्ट फेमस वंस Now let us come to understand the meaning of underwriting. What is mean? What is meant by underwriting? Okay, underwriting basically means that you act as an agent. Okay, आप यहाँ पे एक agent का काम करते हैं underwriting में. Now what is the meaning of underwriting? Underwriting meaning what? See, for example, there is a seller. Okay, there is a seller of any securities. For example, there is a government securities. Okay, or any company securities. Say for example, any corporate bond. Okay, there is a corporate bond. or there is an equity also share also some company wants to sell its shares in the markets okay so it can be anything so there are sellers and uh, you know they want to sell it now they are, they don't know what price uh, they will receive for their government securities or their corporate bond or equity so what they do is they approach these underwriters okay these companies they will approach these primary dealers who act as underwriters they will pay them some fees okay ki they will ask them okay you please do this for us you sell our this much government securities or this much equity or this many bonds okay to the common people to the buyers and you please give us some guaranteed price okay for example the sellers will say that for one share one share we want 500 rupees okay so this should be the guaranteed price that we should receive you can sell it at any price there and this uh, you know this uh, intermediary work that the underwriter is doing uh, okay for this it receives a fee from the seller so the seller will pay them the fee now this underwriter will sell this government securities or any financial product to the buyers to the common people and the buyers will pay them the market price for that securities for example uh, the guaranteed price is say for 500 and the underwriter is able to sell that because of the more high demand in the market it is selling it at say 520 rupees so this 20 rupees extra per share this underwriter is receiving as profit okay so the market price is 520 so uh, and also it is getting some fee it can be other way also it can go down to 480 also so in that case this underwriting will undergo loss so that is how the business happens so this is a kind of business that they are doing so this activity is known as the underwriting activity okay this is very important please keep this in mind underwriting means what underwriting means acting as a agent where you know they guarantee a price to the sellers of the securities or financial products for a fee they will get a fee from the sellers now they will sell those products financial products to the buyers and they will get the market price from them this activity is known as underwriting now what is the underwriter doing here underwriter is bearing the risk involved in selling of financial products say government securities at a price lower than the guaranteed price right so they are bearing a risk so as i have told you if the guaranteed price is 500 and if the actual market price is say only 480 rupees so this 20 rupees loss it is bearing this is a risk that it is holding and for that risk only it is receiving this fee okay it is receiving this fee the return for this risk that they get is the fee from the sellers or the issuers and also the possible higher rates due to more demand okay also the possibility of rates going higher say for example 500 it is selling at actually 520 so this 20 rupees is a possible profit that they can get and also the fee the minimum guarantee fee that it is receiving from the issuers or sellers of the security okay so this activity is known as the underwriting activity uh, so this was about the primary dealer okay i think you have i have explained to you in very much detail uh, what activities primary dealers uh, do uh, i have also explained to you what is the meaning of underwriting now we will start the most important topic of this particular lesson is nbfc okay non banking finance companies uh, these are in uh, current affairs also a lot because of many reasons it can be good reasons bad reasons but it is necessary to understand what is an nbfc how do they work what are the different categories of nbfc from the next video onward we will study nbfc so see you then thank you